The conventions of parliamentary language dictate that you can't call an MP a liar. You can't call him a drunk either. Overtired, yes. Perhaps not quite on top of his brief. Or maybe he's just had a very good lunch. In 1998, the former Armed Forces Minister and Churchill's grandson, Nicholas Soames, appeared to some observers to have lunched like a fish before deciding to take part in a debate on regional development. Oh, Indeed, she is an esteemed alumnet, Madam Speaker, of the Thomas Bennett Community College in Crawley. We m I give way to my own room. Eric, say something. I'm ready to put the question. The question is, are you, does the Minister wish to reply? Mr. K. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I, I, mu I must reply, at least on the, on the record, it seems that uh, the honourable gentleman, after what seems is a very good lunch, he's got extremely, extremely, extremely emotional, if not a little tired. But uh... afterward, Nicholas Soames denied being drunk. He claimed he'd been dining on bananas, still water, and bat droppings. In 1983, before the Commons was televised, Alan Clark, then a junior minister, was due to speak on an employment bill. His first ministerial speech at the dispatch box. It was after lunch. On the 6th of July. Inevitably, I will have to go into some technical legal language in this summer. <laughs> I hope the House will bear with me. And um, in deference to the express wishes of my honourable friend, I will accelerate the pace at which this particular passage is delivered. What he'd had to eat is lost to the public record. But Alan Clark's diaries recall a lunch based around a wine tasting where he'd started with a Palmer 61, then a 75 for comparison, before switching back to a 61, a delicious Pichon Longville. The draft contains regulations which provide that a woman is entitled to equal pay with a man in the same employment or a man with a woman, where her work is of equal value to a man's in terms of the demands made on her, for instance. He didn't like the speech. He probably had a good many drinks. But it wasn't so much drunkenness as, as Alan's insolence and rudeness that made him read the speech like a schoolboy reading aloud, rather than a minister making his own remarks. Paragraph 2, 1. Where a claim for equal pay is to be determined under the new equal value provision, a tribunal will be able to dismiss an application if it is satisfied. That Obviously I'd had quite a few drinks and he was reading the text for laughs. And I got up and said, I know you're not supposed to say that honourable members are drunk, but really the minister's yeah, incapable. And in that case, it wasn't just that he was drunk, he was sneering at the, t the thing he was bringing before Parliament. Paragraph 3, 1. Paragraph <laughs> one. I've read in the newspapers that one is not allowed in this House to accuse another member of not being sober. But I very seriously put it to you that the minister is incapable and that it is disrespect order order the honorable lady ought not to make allegations of that kind claire wasn't as careful as she should have been in in choosing her language and some of alan clark's friends and some of us in the conservative party thought it was she who had misbehaved The Honourable Lady should withdraw the allegation. I mean what I say, but I don't understand the rules of this House, and I'd be grateful for your advice about how I say to this House that I mean it, but I'm allowed 